What's up, aviators, and welcome to Private Pilot Ground Lesson 2 from Free Pilot Training. I'm Josh, and this is my father-in-law, Mike, and today I've got a super important lesson for you on how an airplane creates lift. If you want to learn how to fly, you really need to have a good understanding of some basic aerodynamic principles. In the last lesson, we talked about the four forces that affect an aircraft in flight, but today I want to focus on lift. I mean, I'm no expert, but I'd say that lift is a pretty important part of flying, wouldn't you? Now, you may have noticed this, but airplanes have these things called wings, and wings are an important part of creating lift. Actually, on most airplanes, they're the only part that creates lift. Anyway, our wings use two things to create lift, relative wind and the shape of the wing. Now, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but as I mentioned in the last video, lift is an upward force that opposes the weight of an aircraft and everything on board. Remember, in steady, unaccelerated flight, lift equals weight. But if we want to climb or create more lift, we have to do something. We'll get to that more in just a minute. But for now, let's take a look at how an airplane creates lift. Now, there are really two ways that an airplane creates lift, and we're going to discuss both. But for the written exam, they're mainly going to want you to know about something called Bernoulli's Principle. So let's take a closer look at that. In a nutshell, Bernoulli's Principle states that as the velocity of a moving fluid increases, the pressure within that fluid decreases. Narrow areas like this force the fluid to increase its speed. You'll sometimes hear these narrow areas referred to as venturi. And these venturi areas decrease the pressure when they increase the velocity of a fluid. In other words, this increase in speed causes a decrease in pressure. Now, just like in a venturi, the curved surface of the upper wing forces the air on top of the wing to travel faster than the air on the bottom of the wing. This creates an area of lower pressure on top of the wing and an area of high pressure on the bottom of the wing. And what do you think happens when you have low pressure on the top of the wing and high air pressure on the bottom? That's right, the high air pressure pushes the wing up, which actually creates an upward force. And this is what we're calling lift. Now, to increase that lift, we can do a few different things. One of the ways is to increase the speed of the air going over the top of the wing. We call this air going over and under the wing relative wind because this is a combination of multiple different types of wind. You've got wind that's caused by the thrust of the aircraft, and as we increase the thrust that our aircraft is producing, the speed of that air going over the wings increases as well. Then you've got something called prop wash, which is actually the backwards wind that's caused by the propeller pushing the aircraft forward. This would be like a fan blowing on you when it's hot outside. You also have the actual wind outside that you have absolutely no control over. Sometimes you have a headwind that helps you create more lift, and sometimes you have a tailwind that takes some of your relative wind. This is actually one of the reasons why we take off and land into the wind. This gives us the most amount of relative wind possible so our wings can produce plenty of lift. The other thing we can do is to change the shape of the wing, and we can do that a couple different ways. Now, another name for this side angle view of the wing is called an airfoil, and when we change the airfoil design and make it more curved on top, this increases something that we call the camber of the wing. This simply means that the air on top has to travel a farther distance than the air on the bottom, so it must travel faster in order to meet the air on the other side. This creates even less pressure on the top of the wing, which creates more lift. But this actually increases the drag on the airplane as well, so you can't fly as fast. So, increasing the camber increases our lift, but it also creates more induced drag. One of the ways we can increase the camber on our wings is by lowering the flaps on our aircraft. This lengthens the upper surface of the wing, which creates more lift, but it also increases the drag on our airplane. Another way we can increase the lift that our wing produces is to increase the angle of attack. Now I'm going to go into a lot more detail on this in the next lesson, but in a nutshell, this just means that we're raising the nose of our airplane so that the relative wind has to travel a farther distance around the upper surface of the wing. As you can see, our lift is increased when we do this because that wind on the top has to travel a further distance, just like it did when we increased the camber. But once again, increasing our angle of attack increases our induced drag because we're exposing a bigger portion of our wing to the relative wind. Another thing that creates lift is Newton's third law, which says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now we know that Bernoulli's principle creates lift by creating lower air pressure on the upper surface of the wing. But in addition to that, air can strike the lower surface of the wing and push it up. When relative wind hits the lower surface of the wing, it pushes the wing up and back. And as you can see, when we raise our wing to a higher angle of attack, there's more surface area on the bottom of the wing that's exposed. 
This allows the relative wind to push the wing up and back even harder. So as we increase our angle of attack, lift increases, but drag also increases when we do that as well. Right now you might be thinking, who cares? I want to fly airplanes. I don't want to be a NASA engineer. Well, me neither, but check this out. Now that we know the things that cause lift, we can start using that knowledge to control the aircraft. Right now I'm trimmed out for level unaccelerated flight, but I want to increase my lift. What's something I can do? Well, one of the options is to increase my airspeed. I'm not pulling back on the yoke. I'm simply increasing my airspeed. Watch what happens to my altitude when I do that. Okay, I'm, I'm trimmed out for level flight. The airplane's just kind of flying itself here. All right, so I'm gonna increase power and increase my air, which will increase my airspeed. And watch what happens to my lift. So power's increased. Let's watch the airplane. I'm using the rudder to stay straight ahead here. But notice, we're starting to get a climb. Look at this. All I did was increase this thrust, and that increased our airspeed, and that increased the lift that came, that's coming over the top of the wings. Okay, so what's another way we can increase our lift? Well, I can increase the camber of my wings, so let's lower the flaps and see what happens. All right, so it looks like we're in the wide arc. I'm going to go ahead and lower these flaps, see what happens here. Notice how the airplane's starting to climb here. Okay, that's all we had to do is lower those flaps to increase the camber of the wing. All right, we got a good airspeed. I'll start raising those flaps back up. When we first did that, you probably noticed the airspeed. Yes, we were creating more lift, but we're also inducing more drag. So that caused the airspeed to decrease. And once again, I can increase my angle of attack, and this just means to pitch the nose of the aircraft up. And you'll notice that when I pitch up and increase my angle of attack, that my airspeed is starting to decrease here as well because I'm inducing more drag. All right, so we're not climbing. We're at 2,600 feet here. All right, so all we got to do here is pitch up and just watch that airspeed bleed off. I'm increasing my angle of attack, so my airspeed is bleeding off. So I'm creating more lift, but I'm also causing a decrease in airspeed. Now you know how an airplane creates lift. And in my next lesson, we're going to talk about something you could do that could cause a rapid loss of lift. And if you're not expecting it, it can be pretty stinking scary. And I'll put that video right here when you're ready to get learned.